I finally upgraded my camera and I got myself the new Sony A6700. Let's talk about that. So for the past two and a half years, I've been rocking my A6400, the Sony A6400, which has been my main camera and actually my only camera for doing shoots, uh, most of the vlogs that you've seen on my channel. And I did use it for professional shoots as well, like prenups, uh, product shoots, and it has been extremely reliable and I haven't had any problems with it. But I finally upgraded to the A6700 and I'll be talking about the reasons why I did upgrade. But just so you know, one of the main reasons I did upgrade is I thought to venture more into video or filmmaking side. So as you know, the A6700 comes with a sensor of the FX30, their cinema line cameras. So that's one of the reasons why I decided to get this one. So you may be asking why I upgraded to an APS-C and not straight to a full frame camera instead. I, I have a lot of reasons, but some of the top reasons are number one is current budget and uh, future expenditures probably. And two, I had to think of something that I can make most use of right now at this moment. During my career as a photographer and videographer, I did get a chance to try a bunch of full frame cameras and APS-C cameras. So I do see a difference in quality, but it depends on many things, not just the camera body. There, there could be many reasons on why your APS-C camera isn't sharper than the full frame, or the full frame doesn't perform as well as the APS-C. There are just many reasons for that. It's not just APS-C versus full frame. And of course, I'd like to give a shout out to Johan of 1910 Studios, one of my childhood friends who is now an amazing videographer of 1910 Studios. Please do check out their Instagram page and of course, follow them. And of course, to Ali Mashadi of AMD Designs as well. Amazing photographer and videographer. And he's the one who actually sold me the A6400 in the first place. Please do follow his page as well, AMD Designs, and see some amazing woodwork. So both Johan and Ali actually advised me to go full frame, obviously. I did take their advice into consideration, but sadly, uh, with my current budget, I did think about like um, the extra stuff that I need to buy, which is an extra memory card, and not just uh, not just any memory card. If you are upgrading to the current cameras in 2023, 2024, you do need to get these V60 or V90 memory cards, which do cost a lot. So that is one thing you need to keep in mind if you're planning to upgrade as well. If you want to utilize the full features of the new cameras nowadays, you do need to upgrade your memory card as well. So that you need to, so you need to add that into your budget also. So another thing I needed to get was also an extra battery. So it was the camera, memory card, battery. So when I thought about getting a full frame camera, though the cost didn't fit my budget with all those things that I needed. That's why I ended up leaning to the APS-C, the A6700. The other choice of the camera that I was supposed to upgrade to was actually the A7C2. And here currently where I'm staying, the price difference of the two is around $400 maybe. I'm not sure if it's the same outside of the Middle East. So with that in mind, that extra $400, that's where I ended up spending on the camera cage for protection and extra mounts. I got a memory card upgrade as well and a spare battery. But actually the battery that I got, uh, thanks to the, the person that sold it to me at Ashraf Sony, uh, a Sony supplier here, it's actually a new, new old NT-FZ100. I have yet to try this on the A6700. <laughs> so maybe you'll see a review on my channel soon. By the way, if you are watching until now, thank you so much. Please do subscribe if you hope if you hope to see more camera reviews, uh, video, video stuff. I'll I'll try to venture into some short films hopefully soon. So it would be great if you can 
hit that subscribe button, click the bell notification, and also, of course, leave some comments, your thoughts down below. And of course, I'd like to give out a shout out to Printmaster as well for making my t-shirts of Ekin visuals. They are one of the best sportswear printing shops here in Bari. Please do check them out. So as I mentioned earlier, one of the choices that I was planning to upgrade to was the A7C2. So you're probably thinking, why did I choose the A6700 over the A7C2? Well, uh, if you do, if for people that did check reviews and specs, most of the specs of the A7C2 and the A6700 are very, very similar. I can say the only few differences are, one is the main, main thing is the sensor size, full frame versus crop, and uh, megapixels, of course. Um, I do know it has, I, know, I do know the A7C2 has seven stops of stabilization as well, whereas the A6700 has five, which is not bad. I did try it already. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the A6700 has a dual base ISO, and the A7C2 doesn't, which is another good thing as well, because that sensor is the same as the FX30. The FX30 also has a dual base ISO. So I chose the A6700. As you know, I said it's because of my budget, but the other reason is, when I did a couple of shoots recently, there was one shoot that I rented out the A7 IV, A7 Mark IV. I rented it, and it was for a cleanup. It was good. I did the shoot in the forest here. A couple of months later, I did another prenup shoot with the A6400. And you'll be surprised, the A6400 has very sharp images, as I'll show you. But one reason is, with the A6400, I did the shoot in the forest, outdoors, but with an external flash as well. So that created an extra edge to the A6400. That is what I was saying about it's not just APS-C versus full frame. It also depends on the environment, how you're shooting it, the equipment that you're using to make the shoot as well. And I have been doing a lot of professional shoots with the A6400. Product shoots, a couple of uh, videos as well. And like I said, all my vlogs on this channel has been on the A6400. So that's the reason I got the A6700. So my first thoughts when I got the A6700, I was really happy when I held it in my hand. It has a really big, beefy handle. Way bigger than the 6400. And I have big hands. So it fits just right. But I still did get the cage, so I can get the extra reach on the pinky. Hopefully that will be here in, in the coming week or so. When I first turned it on, tried the couple of uh, picture profiles, I was really blown away with the quality. I can see a big difference in video quality from the A6400. It's probably just because of the sensor itself or even the stabilization, you can tell that there is a big difference. It creates a big difference in your videos. For me, the upgrade really was worth it. It is a big upgrade from the A6400, especially on the video side. Pictures, it can, it's probably almost the same, probably 80 to 90% the same. Uh, of course, like I said, it all depends on how you do your shoot. To me, it was really worth the upgrade because, as I said, I'm planning to venture into a bit of filmmaking, short films, some cinematic stuff. So, video side, it really was the upgrade for me. Especially with the 60 frames per second without the crop. Um, it can also shoot uh, 4K of 120p, imagine that. So, if I were to give advice to people that are in same situation as I am, and you plan to upgrade from maybe an A6400 or an A6000 series, any of those, I would say the A6700 is a good upgrade for you. You should go for it, especially if that is the limit of your budget. You won't regret it. You can do a lot of great work with it, especially on videos, photos as well. The low light uh, difference is is okay as well, it's not bad. The fact that it has a dual base ISO, so the noise reduction kicks in at 2,500. From the A6400 to the A6700, you get a lot of customizable buttons, which I have done a lot of programming already, and it's very, very useful. I'm telling you, it's extreme, extremely useful. I've already programmed my stuff on, on one, two, and three, 
and I can't wait to use it on a proper professional shoot. So that was it for this uh, short uh, video and news of my upgrade. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and please once again do subscribe and I will definitely be posting a lot more videos with this A6700, especially a lot of cinematic stuff and probably some reviews with lenses as well. So once again guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.